Okay. So we got 14 pieces of gable metal. We needed 13 supposedly, but we might have one extra. Now, next thing Roger will need will be the a soffit catcher. That's going to be the first thing he's going to need from me. So I'm going to go ahead and bend one out of this here. This one piece should be enough to do the whole house. And if it's not, I'm bending it the same, the same inch and a half on the bottom as all the other ones. So I'll be able to take a scrap of one of those and just cut off that top cut off the top shadow bend and just use that as a soffit catcher it's just an L bend that's all it is the smaller the piece the more you have to worry about actually um, tweaking it when you're when you're adjusting it in the brake. If I just go ahead and push in the middle, I can make this thing go an inch and a half to an inch in the middle. I don't want to do that. Sometimes the ends get a little bit over bent. Just run your hand down it and straighten it out. So I'm just gonna right on this thing. Whoops. Yep. Looks like soffit catcher. Very hastily scribbled. Set this over here. And I'll cross that off our list too. So now we know Roger can finish that whole gable end with what I have bent. This metal J actually works out pretty well. What do we have? We got six more pieces seven so I'm gonna actually cut these in half I could have cut that one in half too we're doing now our our metal J for the for the garage doors and I want that to be white so actually it gets bent the same way we got six and a half so it's three and three and a quarter is the middle point. So, inch and three quarters. Um, yeah, because the outside is exposed on the metal J that goes against the soffit. And then the inside is exposed inside the J pocket of those garage doors gets bent the exact same way. It is going to be different though because I can only come so far out with the one of the legs of the metal J that goes inside those. Inside the PVC. Inside this PVC pocket right here. It's got to be a really tight bend, probably five eighths of an inch. It's really actually pretty difficult to make that a bend that tight with the brake if you're bending a U because this bending mechanism is out three quarters so it's like you gotta very carefully do it and it's almost an inch deep so if I go three quarters with the outer bend I know that the metal is not going to stick out past 
the trim. Go three quarters. And I could mark the middle too, that way it doesn't. That way I know that I'm heading straight across the whole thing. This middle's in out a little bit. There we go. Really hardly a fast way to do this. I'm actually twisting that out a little bit. It's gonna be a little shorter over there, but that's okay. Okay, so I actually wanna underbend this one a little bit. I went a little too far with it. So I want this edge to stay tight with the outside of the trim. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna go, once I bend this thing, I'll show you. I'll go slip it in there and I'm going as small as I can go. This is right about there. There's just enough meat for that bending mechanism to grab onto. And I'm pushing this in. I'm pushing in like that pushing the top edge in and I'm gonna kind of work it I'm hoping that I can get it to go yep there we go so I bent it a little a little smaller than three quarters the siding will be all slip inside there and let's see hoping I can tuck it in there. Yep. So that'll slip in all the way down. I might have to finagle something a little bit. Might have to pop some of those screws and back them out so it'll go in completely. Yeah, that's that tucks in a much further than that. Yeah, these ones down here will have to come out. But I think you guys get the idea. And it'll be all white inside there. You won't see any of that black. I'll stack these up here. So I need to bend six of those things. So it'll take me a minute to do that. So if you want to fast forward, I'm going to I'm going to just record the whole thing. Uh, you can probably fast forward the next at least five, six, seven minutes. And that should get you out of this, this little bit that I'm doing. I don't know if I'll have if any bits, if any tips will come to me during this time. Uh, I'm just going to keep it rolling. Under, under bent a little bit, not quite to a 90, a little less than a 90. That way this edge stays tight. And once again, going as small as I dare to, where I think it's going to actually still bend the piece and not push it into the brake. That's what happens. And that's why I'm going a little bit out of time. I'm letting this rubber reset. There we are. Two, and we need four more. We had an inch and three quarters.
inch and three quarters. Should have marked out the three quarter while I was there. Go a little shy on three quarters. There we go. And generators actually pretty quiet when I got here those guys were running the thing in the garage like maniacs get one chance at that never know you'll just be dead carbon monoxide poisoning it's no joke so i moved it outside of the garage see how that thing got so curled i should have i should have worked out that a little bit more now it's not a very straight bend right there And I'm just unbending that a little bit. So again, this edge will go tight. There we go. And I can basically go about five eighths of an inch is what I'm trying to do. Maybe a half inch. A half inch would be just lovely, but try to go a half an inch it's just gonna push it into the brake just like you just saw happen so, just work. there we go that's a little better this isn't the most beautiful one It'll probably work all right though. And there's two reasons for this around those garage doors. One is it's just gonna make it white behind there. You won't be seeing the Tyvek behind the siding. And the other is I can actually make the make the trim watertight by forming a channel that will give the water somewhere to run. It's got to be done correctly though. There we go. Just need two more for the garage doors and then I need one metal J that's going to be slightly different but pretty close to the same for the soffit. Inch and, inch and three quarters and a little shy on three quarters. Oh yeah, we cut that off and then we'll mark the other side. Trying to avoid taking my tape out and putting it back in a bunch of times. So if you can find ways to repeat processes, it'll always be faster. 
as long as you're not like taking a major detour to repeat a process. good there and this doesn't have to be exact because the there's nothing so exact about this other than that three-quarter band and, all. and the five-eighths or, or the half-inch band those are the things that matter but the overall width of the piece doesn't really matter I could I could bend a a one foot piece to get this if I wanted to. It'd just be a waste of a lot of metal. So, And this one you guys probably noticed, I'm just eyeballing it. And hoping that it works out well. That's what I've been doing all along, just eyeballing that bend, making it as small as possible. See, now I don't have to pull my tape out again. This thing's already marked. So pull your tape out, put it back in your pouch. You know, it costs you a few seconds. Here and there, starts to add up. guys are like so what it's a couple of seconds like, well you know when you're trying to be as efficient as you can you know it's a matter of getting a house done in a, in a couple of weeks or a couple of months all those little tips and tricks start to pile up Okay, I'll set these aside. And we need one. So those are our metal J's and we need one for the soffit. We need three of those. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and still gonna rip this down to do that metal J. That way we have extra. This one's gonna be different, so we'll still go our inch and three quarter. Once again, inch and three quarter. I'm saying this one's going to be different, so I'm not going to bother marking the marking the outer edge because we already have all the metal jet we need. And the scrap that I'm cutting off is going to work for either a drop catcher or something else. There we go. So the the metal J that I like to do, I like to go an inch. And the, that gives plenty of room for the, plenty of wiggle room for the soffit to go inside of there.
that right on right on there and sometimes you might have to almost twist twist the metal and that's kind of what I was doing right there now this one can be either a 90 or slightly over bent and once again I'm doing the same oh you know what the soffit's 5 8 so I can go a little bit bigger with this the, the soffit's got to be able to fit inside of this trough that I'm making. So that's probably good right there. It's a wee bit bigger. I think that looks good. And if anything, I want this edge to be really tight. So I'm actually going to take it out and put it in there just so. I'm actually going to use this bending, this clamping mechanism to bend that. Oops. So that is pretty good. And this will be our soffit. J channel. So where we have a 45 in the soffit in the inside corner, we can put two pieces out back to back. That'll make a nice seam. Uh, okay, so we got those. Now I'm going to do my three drop catchers, and then we'll do the hems. The drop catchers, I'm going to go ahead and make them, I'm going to make them white. So I'm going to bend them this way. Because usually the siding, or the plywood, the plywood sticks out past the foundation. And so all I'm doing is I'm bending about a one inch piece one inch leg and I'm going to leave it at an angle. That way it's, it's fairly adjustable. Now it'll go from plywood to foundation and I can unbend that a little bit if I need to when I'm installing it. So we got two more of those to make. Then we can do our hems. Inch and three quarter. and three quarter. Kind of hard to see the mark on this black. Yeah, it looks good. Whatever. Good enough. These don't have to be exact either. The only thing that I like to keep exact about them is that that one inch leg I like to keep that pretty consistent even though it's mostly hidden it'll be hidden be behind the J channel that I'm going to install so. there's two and number three number three go. I'm going about a 45 degree angle or so. So those are all our drop catchers. My very, very technical name that I invented for them. Actually kind of stole that design from a different cider. I used to bend a 90 
and then any variations between the plywood and the foundation I had to do a lot of trimming to make that 90 hit that wall perfectly all right so now we got our hems flats we got our one flat box our hems the boxes and the flats so actually this thing here I know I know about five feet is gonna be plenty for those three boxes to have a hem so I'm just gonna lop that right off there and set this aside and I want it to be black on the outside of the hem so I need to mark this side here and I'm gonna do a half inch hem and this is kind of what I was talking about referring to on the, the gable metal is some people do this on that first leg of the gable metal right there this half inch has to go in so I try to put it out here then it would just push it into the brake and I'd have a really ugly bend right there so a half inch is just enough meat for the inside of the brake to be all clamped down on there we go this actually this top edge is going to be too long <laughs> it's bigger is bigger than the four inch bend on our um, on our gable metal. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and just zip that right off. Hopefully it doesn't mess it up, but if it does then it'll be all right. Yeah, that's meant. Okay. I was thinking it might crinkle this edge right here. Okay, so now we're just gonna clamp that. Drop this right down in there and bend that up. So that's what's called the hem right there. And the bottom leg of the fascia metal is going to sit right in there when we go across one of those boxes. I actually like to cut them down so they're about the appropriate size. Or did I even cut it out? Five foot. I know that the one over there is going to be a little smaller, so I'll go maybe 22 inches. That should work out just fine. 22 inches will do the front box, and this little one will do this back box that we took a look at earlier. There we go. There's our three hems. Cross those off the list. And now we'll get going on those flats. We need 14. So like I said, that's five strips of metal because it's a six inch bend you add that inch and a half bottom leg, add that inch and a half bottom leg and that's seven and a half. So I know I can get three out of one. There we go, 10 foot. Fortunately, most of this, these, these flat bends is mostly covered up because there's a gutter going on top of it. Um, if there was no gutter, 
If there was no gutter, I would take my brake body. Since it's such a wide, flat band, 